The Tucker Carlson interview with Vladimir Putin has logged more than one billion views. You could say this is the most watched history lesson in world history. In the first 20 minutes of the interview, Vladimir Putin gave Tucker Carlson and those one billion viewers a introduction to a thousand years of history of the peoples of Russia and the peoples of Ukraine in their intertwined histories. Some claim the history he provided is inaccurate, but don't really make clear what is inaccurate. Some people dismiss his obsessive focus on the history of Russia and Ukraine as the obsessions of a dictator. I don't think either of those things are true, uh, but I think a lot of viewers would have found it, it a little bit hard to follow the history of this period dating back to the 800s and may not have really understood why Vladimir Putin would be talking about this story. It all comes down to, I guess, the origin myths, the origin stories of Russia and Ukraine. And that relates to a period of history known as the period of Kievan Rus. Uh, and although that term is used, it is a bit of a misnomer in some ways because it refers to an area that stretches up to the north of Russia uh, and really down into the Black Sea. It's not just about Kiev, it's not just about Ukraine or about Russia. Although this period of history is unfamiliar to many audiences in, I guess, the West, uh, or outside of Russia and Ukraine, this period of history is vital to the stories of Russian history. It's vital to the stories of Russian and Ukrainian culture and uh, history. And uh, in some ways you could compare it to, if you were to use a familiar, in the Anglophone world, a familiar example of British history, you compare it to the period between the um, Alfred the Great, 1066 and all that, and the War of the Roses. Many people seem to know that history very well. It's a constant focus in TV series and shows and movies, in historical myths, and it has even been, I guess, transplanted into books like the Game of Thrones. If you take off a very narrow national perspective you can see that this period of time is actually crucial to self-understanding culture and history of peoples in Russia and Ukraine. And what's more it's not just Vladimir Putin or Russia that's been talking about the, the connection between uh, events way back in 800 or 900 or 1000 or 1200 AD. It is also people uh, who uh, take the side of Ukraine in this war. The trident symbol, the commonly used ubiquitous trident symbol of Ukraine, it's called the Trizub, uh, that in fact dates back to this period. It was used on coins in Kievan Rus by uh, coined by Vladimir the Great or Vladimir the Great who was referred to in Vladimir Putin's interview. The idea in books like by Serhi Ploki that Ukraine is the gates of Europe uh, in contrast to the Russian more sort of Eurasian culture is again is pivots around this story and the fall of Kiev to the Mongols in the, in 1240. And what's more, the major historians who are commonly quoted in uh, talking about Ukraine will often refer to this period too as the beginnings of an independent Ukraine. Almost, almost that uh, in, in a way Russia sort of 
took over the culture of Kievan Ukraine uh, and adopted it for its own. So there have been long history wars about Ukraine over the last few years, and you can see Vladimir Putin's talk at the start of this show is trying to put his side of that perspective. And it's a well documented side of the perspective within Russian historiography. It's not just his personal obsessions. And what is more, this particular period and, um, you know, I guess set of multiple cultures in this region of Eurasia uh, is fascinating. It is part of the story of the global Middle Ages. And it's one perhaps we can learn a lot about. But you will learn about it most successfully if you try to let go of nationalist versions of history or Western biased versions of history. Of course, with any period of history that's, I guess, over a thousand years ago, there's going to be different interpretations of events and figures. And in fact, people have argued over the nature of this history and what it means for the history of Russia and Ukraine for centuries. So uh, these arguments are nothing new and can't be resolved by a fact check by some media organisation. They relate to big questions about interpreting history. But if you do explore this period of history with an open mind and a curious heart, then you will discover a fascinating story of, I guess, the intermingled origins of at least three countries, Russia, Ukraine and Belarus. And in some ways also the story of Poland, of big parts of Eastern Europe and big parts of Eurasia because the story of the Mongol Empire, of the Khazars of Eurasia and, and uh, Eastern Europe, are very, the Tatars of the Black Sea and Crimea are very much part of this story too. And what is more, you will also discover uh, one of the great works of Russian literature uh, in some ways, one of the great works of world literature, which also in some ways perhaps is a foretaste of the tragedy of separating out in artificial ways national histories of interwoven cultures in Russia, Ukraine, and that whole part of Eurasia. Now, about a year or so ago, I made a podcast on this very topic. I had no idea Vladimir Putin would do an interview with Tucker Carlson that would reach a billion people and that this topic would feature within it. But that is what I did. So what I thought I'd do is reproduce that uh, video for you now and you can explore the common myths histories, stories of the origins of Russia, Ukraine and Belarus in the period between 800 and roughly 1200 AD.